good afternoon, everybody. I think we'd like to get uh, the formal part of our project uh, or uh, program uh, out of the way, and then you can continue conversations uh, when you're done. Um, <clears throat> So uh, welcome everyone here and thank you for coming to this uh, uh, campaign launch. We're here to launch the capital campaign to uh, renew Grable's residence. I think everyone knows me, but I'm Marcus Schantz. I'm the president here at, at Grable. Um, so this is an interesting uh, project because it's not for a new building or a new program, uh, but it's uh, actually a reinvestment in something that's already here. Uh, with this campaign, we're going to take on the glamorous work of replacing pipes and toilets and HVAC equipment. And in doing that, we are breaking a number of rules about fundraising. Uh, this is not a flashy project. Uh, it's not for a new building or a new program. It's not for things that you can put your name on, although if someone wants to name the toilets, we, we can talk about that for a price. And it's not something that people expect us to be successful at. So when I tell peers uh, who have similar roles what we're trying to accomplish with this campaign, they say you can't raise money for that kind of stuff. Uh, but I, I disagree, and, and, uh, and I'm so grateful that Grable has supporters and donors who are practical uh, and who can get behind uh, good stewardship. So thank you all for, for your part in this, and thank you for coming. Most universities in Ontario uh, went through a period of rapid expansion in the 60s and 70s, and the campuses they built are now 50 and 60 years old. Uh, and these buildings are now showing their age, and just like a person, some parts need replacing when you get to age 50 or 60. And I think Grable, over the years, has done a pretty good job of keeping up with its aging buildings. Every new project we've done in the past 20 years has included significant un upgrades to existing facilities, new roofs, new pipes, and so on. Uh, but apart from changing the furniture in the rooms, we haven't done much in the residence itself. We did a big renovation at this level uh, a few years ago, but we haven't done much in the residence rooms. Uh, and that's what we want to tackle with this project. So Mimi Brown, our Director of Operations, will speak to the details in a few minutes. Uh, but I'll just say now that a major focus of this project will be on adding new heating and cooling systems to the residents. There's never been air conditioning in the residents. Uh, and in doing this, we have four goals. We want to replace old equipment. We want to improve student comfort. We hope that air conditioning will attract more students to stay at Grable in the summertime, so perhaps to generate some more revenue. Uh, and we hope that a shift to new equipment will significantly reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So that's that bigger part of the project in a nutshell. Uh, I'll now invite our chair, Andrew Roth, uh, just to bring a few greetings from the board. Thanks, Marcus. It's, uh, it's great to have you all here. We're really pleased that you took a little bit of time out of your day to, to join us. Uh, in addition to the usual oversight that the board has been doing, we've, had, we've tried to address a few other issues over the last couple of years, um, including our updating and solidifying our relationship with MCEC and updating our bylaws. In addition, and perhaps more importantly, a primary focus of the board over the last couple of years has been the long-term financial health and sustainability of the college. You don't need to follow the news all that much to know that uh, there's a bit of a crisis going on in um, the education sector in Ontario. Uh, Marcus and his leadership team have been working hard to maintain and strengthen relationships with U, with U, U of W and the other colleges uh, to work together on those challenges. 
The student support team at the college is also working to nurture and continue the cultural ethos that's, that Grable, Grable is famous for. As part of these processes, and in addition to them, the board identified a need to ensure that the physical plant is maintained and stays relevant to the evolving needs and expectations of today's students. Much of the work is not glamorous, as, as Marcus alluded to. It's hard to get excited about replacing 60-year-old 60, 60 infrastructure, but it is necessary and allows us to keep with the times and update our student experience and facility rental opportunities in line with con contemporary amenities and modern expectations. The kitchen and dining room addition and upgrades were one step in that process, and now we're ready to take the next step. So, your presence here today and your ongoing support contributes directly to these long-term goals of the board and helps uh, Conrad Grable stay relevant and effective for years to come. We recognize this is only one step in a journey that was started 60 years ago, uh, but we're really glad to have you all along for this portion of it. So thank you for your support. Now I'll ask Mimi Brown up to uh, do a more detailed overview of what uh, kinds of projects we're looking at. Thanks, Marcus. So uh, as Marcus said, I'm Mimi Brown. I'm the Director of Operations here at Grable, and I'm going to give you a few more details about this project. So as Marcus mentioned, this is a plan uh, for our planet and our students. And if you aren't already aware, we do have a goal matching the University of Waterloo's goal to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 35% by 2030. And almost half of that goal is going to be achieved through this project. Also, as Marcus said, these are our four uh, principles that we're trying to accomplish in this project. So environmental sustainability, you all, our students and our donors, expect us to be a leader and take action in this area, and we are doing that with this project. Student livability, we want our students and residents to be able to focus on their studies, on their activities, on getting a good night's sleep and not be distracted by uncomfortable temperatures in their spaces or lack of ventilation. For In terms of good stewardship, we want to invest in our residents now so that it's working well for our students now and for decades into the future. And as both uh, Marcus and Andrew mentioned, increased revenues uh, in the current post-secondary climate in Ontario, we're really interested in increasing revenues where we can. And we expect this project to help attract more students to our residents, especially in the summertime, as well as conference guests. So a bit more about the project. The process that got us here, Marcus spoke a bit about this. So you may remember we did an academic building expansion back in 2013. That was a big four-story addition. It included the Center for Peace Advancement, increased library space, and more classrooms. Just a couple years ago, we opened this beautiful space here in the kitchen and dining room that's expanded uh, to accommodate more people and is serving us very well. And so we really felt that the residence was the next area that needed attention. We commissioned a feasibility report from engineering company Walter Fady, and that was finished up this past summer. And we'll get into the details of that report in just a minute. We also had some consultations with our building trades, with contractors, with other engineers and the University of Waterloo to get their input and advice to us on this project. And we also convened a building advisory committee that I'll introduce a little bit later. And these folks are also contributing their expertise and advice to this project. So these investigated measures, these eight different measures were what Walter Fady investigated in this feasibility study. You can see there are four in green, and those are the measures that we are planning to go ahead with. And there are four in black. Those are the measures we're not planning to go ahead with at this time. And I'll explain a bit more about why we've made those decisions. So gender neutral washrooms. We are planning to renovate our existing washroom spaces with more privacy to create functional gender neutral washrooms. And the reasoning for this is that more and more of our student body are identifying as neither male nor female 
and we want spaces where all of our students can feel comfortable living using the facilities here. This is a priority for our students. We have heard that loud and clear from them. And you can see we have two options here. There's one that's using the existing footprint of our washrooms and just renovating those with floor to ceiling partitions for the toilets and the shower stalls. There is a larger option there that's putting two bays together. And uh, you can see the emissions reductions here will be about 2.7%. That's because uh, these are low flow fixtures going into these new washrooms. If you're using less hot water, you're using less energy to heat that water. And you can see the price tag there is about $785,000. Residence heating and cooling. So picture this. Uh, you're in a Grable residence room, it's summertime, the sunlight is streaming through those big windows, it's hot. And as happened two summers ago, it's wildfire season. And so it's smoky outside. So you're hot, uh, you have no cooling, you can't open the windows, there's no other ventilation, what do you do? And so our solution to this problem is installing high efficiency air source heat pumps in the residence. These will provide more efficient heating than the current natural gas fired boilers that we have and also the addition of cooling. Our residents have said this is a top priority for them. And this requires a building electrical upgrade to make this happen. That's why it has a big price tag, you can see, of $3.2 million for this. But we do feel that it's worth it because of the student priority and for the reasons we've mentioned. You can also see it gets us about 5% towards our emissions reduction goal. It would be more, but we're adding the cooling, which is using additional energy that we're not currently using now. And there's also ventilation will be added as part of this measure. Domestic hot water electrification. This is adding, uh, instead of our current gas-fired um, hot water heaters, this is replacing those with electric heat pumps. This will reduce our emissions by 7.9%. So that's a big reduction for a relatively small price tag of $101,000. So this to us seems like a no-brainer. And plumbing sanitary refurbishment. So uh, this is very needed. We, have a, we had a big leak over here a few weeks ago in the ceiling. There's currently a small leak over here in the ceiling that's going to be fixed next week. And so this, as you can see, doesn't get us towards our emissions reduction target, but is just a logistically needed piece. And uh, it's $64,000. We will make that back in reduced service calls. <laughs> so this is what we're not doing and why. So window upgrade. This campaign is called Windows to the Future. A couple years ago, we did an energy audit that told us that replacing the windows in the residence was going to have huge emission reduction potential for us. We got really excited about it, named the campaign after it. Uh, when we did the more detailed study this summer, you can see actually the emissions reduction on this is only 1%. And at a price tag of over a million dollars, we decided it's not worth it to do it. These other measures here that are mentioned, you can also see relatively high price tags, relatively low or even negative emissions reductions. Again, just wanting to be responsible with the money uh, that we're given in our budget. It just didn't make sense to do these at this time. In terms of timeline, we're looking at doing this project over the next two summers. Because heating and cooling is such a top priority, we really want to do it as soon as possible. We'd like to do it next summer. However, there's a lot of design work that still needs to happen for that. And we know supply chains with sourcing heat pumps can be lengthy. So it may be more realistic to think about doing it summer 2026 and instead aim to do the washroom project next summer in 2025 along with the pipelining. And um, the domestic hot water project can happen any time we have week of shutdown after every term, and that would be easy to fit in. So at this point, I want to invite you, if you are on the building advisory committee or the campaign advisory committee to stand, these are folks that have volunteered their time to help us with this project, either with giving advice to the project or fundraising. And so we'd like to thank you now.
Thanks, Mimi. Um, uh, Nikolai Jablanka is our uh, student council president this year at Grable, and I've, uh, we've asked him to say a few words about why this is important for students. Thank you, Marcus. Um, it's exciting to see so many folks here. Um, I laughed a little bit to myself as Mimi was speaking because a couple of the things that she said were really uh, familiar for me. I can say that the leak um, in the ceiling that occurred a couple of weeks ago right over there, I was actually sitting at one of these tables as that happened and heard the crash of the ceiling tile fall on the ground. Um, <laughs> these are the sorts of things that unfortunately we've seen a little bit more of in the last couple of years. It's not an uncommon experience to have um, bathroom closures where you know, there's a problem with the plumbing that needs to be fixed before that bathroom becomes available again. Um, I also happen to live in residence. The term that Mimi was talking about over the summer where we were in the middle of wildfire season, um, I imagine that many of you would remember um, being around Southern Ontario at that time, going outside, it frequently um, smelled like a campfire. It was very kind of musty, the air, and uh, that was quite an experience to be in residence through that, especially through the hot temperatures. But um, it's really exciting to see these proposals and these ideas that um, we want to get done, especially when you consider the climate impact of those. Obviously, our generation is set to be affected pretty heavily by the climate crisis, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions is a really big part of addressing that. Um, I did a bit of reading earlier, and I thought I'd share a couple of things with you that you might find a little bit surprising. Um, one is that about 26% of global energy-related emissions are from operations of buildings. So this is a really big deal. Um, another thing is, obviously, UW has some goals. Um, that being said, the energy intensity uh, that they're measuring is based on a 2015 baseline. They're only down by 6%. So we've got a long way to come with a lot of this, and that's not to bash anyone, it's not to say that we can't do it, but I think it's also an exciting opportunity for Grable to lead by example, to make some uh, kind of big changes. And obviously, as Marcus was saying, this isn't necessarily a typical sort of thing that you would fundraise for, but I think it's a really great opportunity to do something special. So thank you very much. So I had asked a donor uh, to come and and, ex and talk about why uh, why he supports the project, but he he got sick, and then so what do you do when you're sick? You turn to family. So I I asked my my step or my my uncle, my wife's uncle Lee Shantz, we're related but not through the Shantzes. Uh, I asked Lee to uh, say a few words about why uh, why he, he and his family are supporting this. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> Uh, and it's not because I'm related or that Marcus is related to me, okay? Um, the story begins actually, I think, when uh, a year ago, Fred Martin took a picture uh, during the, was it the open, open house, I think, uh, weekend? And it was a picture of three grandparents, uh, parents, and two students who were living here at Grable. Uh, that is a treasured picture, as it turns out, uh, because it involves our two grandchildren and the and grandmother over here and another grandmother who's from Edmonton. We happen to be uh, grandparents of two children who've moved from Edmonton to here and have thrived in this Grable environment. And we can say that with great uh, thankfulness and great appreciation. So over the course of the next months, um, uh, following the um, encouragement, I think, from Fred, I reached out to the other grandmother in Edmonton to say, would you consider being part of, uh, well, we were talking windows back at that point, uh, would you consider being part of that? And she was all over it. And so we decided to be uh, sponsors of, uh, uh, of this project and um, are delighted to have brought our first uh, uh, part of our pledge here tonight. 
to get this into the mix. And uh, I think, why are we doing this? We have been so appreciative of how uh, two of our grandchildren have thrived here at Grable. And um, uh, the one, uh, one person, Chloe, has been here for, four, she's in her fourth year now, living in the apartment. And, um, and our grandson started two years ago and he's been in residence here. He will be very grateful for all the things that are part of this project. And we're doing, to, we're doing it because we're grateful and because we want to ensure that this facility uh, will also be uh, available and in good condition for future students. That's why we're doing it. Thanks very much, Lee. Um, so we're almost at the end. Uh, I'd like to say a word about the windows. So windows to the future is a great tagline. Uh, it was such a good tagline that we had a hard time letting go of it. Um, but to be clear, the window panes uh, do get replaced. They've been replaced repeatedly over the years. It's the window frames that are 60 years old. But in the course of our studies, it turns out that an aluminum, a commercial aluminum window frame can last almost indefinitely. And so when we were presented with the reality that, that the engineers were telling us that, that uh, replacing them wouldn't actually do a lot of good, we, we decided that it was, it was better uh, to do uh, and more responsible to do as we were told rather than to spend a million dollars for the sake of a good tagline. Uh, so maybe we should think of it as windows in the future as opposed to <laughs> windows to the future. Uh, but we are transparent, huh? Uh, about everything. Um, so what, how much do we want to raise? How much have we raised so far? Well, we want to raise $4 million. Uh, that's not quite as much as the early estimates that we've had for what we want to do, but $4 million is a good round number. Uh, and we're going to have to work very hard to stay within our means with this, because as was suggested earlier, uh, there isn't a lot of slack in the system in, uh, in Ontario uh, universities right now. There, isn't any, there aren't any big operating surpluses that can cover, uh, cover off and overrun. So we're going to have to be very disciplined about what we, what we do and how we do it. So $4 million. Uh, the rule, uh, generally speaking, is that you want to have 75% of that raised before you get in front of a mic and announce a campaign. So that's $3 million. We're not there. We have raised $2,999,268.48 raised or pledged as of today. So right now, one of you can help us get to that, that $3 million mark. How are we going to do this? Well, at this stage of the campaign, uh, what we're focusing on is still the windows. So uh, Margaret over there and Jen Conkle uh, have come up with a lovely board there that's kind of, it's not a thermometer, it's something different. It's a little mock-up, and I encourage you to go look at it, of, uh, of the Grable residence. There are 70 windows at Grable, and what we want to do is try to raise 700,000 of the remaining amount with $10,000 pledges for each window. So you can sponsor a room, effectively. Uh, uh, we're looking at doing this over a, a five-year period, so we're looking for, uh, for 70 people uh, or pairs of people or combinations of people to, to sponsor uh, uh, one window for $10,000 uh, uh, paid out over five years. Uh, we've been reaching out to alumni in particular for this, so we're looking to people to maybe reach out to an old roommate and say, hey, maybe we could do this. Uh, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. But of course, any gift uh, is just fine with us, so if, if you're interested in donating more or less, uh, we're, we're happy to receive that. There are pledge forms back there. Uh, some of us are going to hang around a bit to, to, to talk to you in case you want more information. Uh, but for now, I just want to thank you all for, for coming to this. Uh, it says a lot that we have this kind of support. So thank you.